Hey, Steve, this marks three weeks in a row. We do a little bit of mule and donkey talk here on Facebook. How about this? I've had more fun with this. People have been calling me. They've been texting me, been emailing me. Hey, Steve, you know, look at this. I, I really, they've really said they've enjoyed it, you know? Yeah. And some folks wondering how you got to be on the television. Yeah. <laughs> well, that happened, actually happened a lot of years ago. If we get into the real television with, uh, uh, with that sort of thing, it was, it was just originally, it was just, sending in a DVD and said, hey, this is what I do for training, you know, and then next thing I know, I get this phone call and, and from this producer, and he says, hey, we want to use that stuff, and it went on from there, you know. Yeah, RFD TV, was that, was that what that was? Yep, RFD TV. Yeah, and my sponsor was Real Heritage, uh, which is a great magazine that does a lot of, of uh, uh, small farming things like, like this, but they 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 were one of the sponsors, and you have to have a sponsor to be on uh, RFD TV. And you know you know what it costs two hundred fifty thousand a year. Oh my goodness! Well, Rural Heritage was good to you. Yes, very good to me. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, everyone that's hanging out with us, thanks so much for hanging. Uh, we sent out some links, letting people know that we've been doing this and folks have been liking it. The first video we did had about 1,500 views. The one we did from last week, Steve, there's been uh, over 3,000 uh, people who have uh, seen that video, watched some of it. So, so it's definitely Fun. resonating. And the more that um, the more that it gets out there, the more more folks are asking about you know mules and donkeys. They're giving it a look for the first time, and that's the first question that I've got. But before we do that. Um, I just want to remind folks that you've got two appearances coming up here in the next little bit. Of course, last weekend we did Why Does My Mule Do That at the ranch, and that was a lot of fun. We had a great group of people there, two really nice mules, very good disposition on them, uh, and one just awesome young girl who was riding. Tell us about her real quick. 14 years old from California, and uh, she the, the kid had these natural abilities. Uh, the big thing, the mule was running through his shoulder um, because people obviously had done lateral flexions with him. And it's another story. But anyway, she knew when it was happening. So when I told her what to do, bang, she was able to fix it right away. And after that, I just told her one time and she rode that mule out and, and did really good. And, and at the end result, less than 15 minutes, that mule couldn't wait to respond to her next. You know, that was Pretty cool. She was using my mule rider's martingale and then using the proper technique behind it, and she did very good. Yeah, her timing was awesome, especially for 14 years old. Oh, hey, you, you give a young girl uh, something to set on for a saddle, and it's amazing. They can outdo the majority of us guys riding. They're incredible. You know? Yeah, they take two of them. At that quickly. age, you got no fear. Yeah, yeah, she was fantastic. So we did that this last Saturday. And um, come the end of the month, you're going to be in Tennessee for the uh, the Southern Equine Expo. It's in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, February 23 and 25. And I was looking at the schedule. We just put that on MuleRanch.com. You've got five different sessions. You've got Mule and Donkey, Saddles, Bits and Tack, uh, a, uh, a version of Why Does I, My Mule Do That? We Of course, we did a full day at Queen Valley Mule Ranch. I think you have an hour or so. Um, at the uh, expo, then you're doing a session on how mules, horses, and donkeys communicate. Another session on how to communicate with your mule or donkey, and then finishing up on Sunday with trail riding with confidence. Of course, we're doing a trail riding with confidence at Queen Valley Mule Ranch, a two-day event, um, March 10 and 11. So that'll be a lot of fun. And I know that we, the more we've been talking about Murfreesboro, uh, the more we found folks are uh, folks are actually going to be coming out there and seeing you. Uh, for the event. I know they're real excited to have added a mule trainer this year, you know? Yeah, that's uh, that's what Patrick was telling me. He said he's actually been getting more calls and um, more, hey, list. that's a great deal, than than with the horses. So it's the, the mule thing, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Boy, we want them mule and donkey people out there. And uh, we, I want to be able to visit with you and, and this sort of thing. Ask questions. Uh, just come on and ha enjoy the, the time. Awesome. Well, let's get right into the questions. A whole stream of questions came in this last week on Facebook and Instagram. I've kind of been collecting them. 
And uh, if you asked a question and we don't get to it today, never fear, we'll answer it in a future one. And maybe I'll get Steve to hang out uh, with me one time between now and then, and we'll answer some of them and throw them up on YouTube. The first one that I want to um, that I want to ask you, Steve, comes kind of from Beth Crandall on Instagram and uh, Paul, who had just sent you an email today, and it's kind of about getting started with uh, with mules and donkeys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read both questions, and then I'm gonna kind of combine them and ask you. So. Paul says, I'm 60, I live in Buckeye, and I'd like to ride a mule in White Thank. I don't know if you meant White Tank. White Thank, do you know what, you know what he means there? What's that? I, you got me there. Uh, All right, so maybe we'll say White Tank. Maybe that's a place, but I'd like to ride a mule. Yeah. Can you suggest any ranch in the area that offers lessons on riding a mule? I'm thinking about a mule rescue or a mule because I want to be safe, and I don't think horses are as safe as mule. Thank you. And then uh, Beth... Crandall from Instagram says, where can I get more information about training for mules and donkeys? I have more questions than would fit here. I've only worked with a few, though I've been studying, doing horse training uh, for a few years. So the reason I want to combine those questions is basically what they're getting at is, um, tell me what I need to know about getting started with a mule, whether it's training or whether it's looking to ride or pack or drive. Um, what do I need to know to get started? What are the basics? about getting started with mules. So go ahead and just, does that question make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they're, and they're both looking at it correctly because they're both saying, what can I do? How can I get the education? So many people go out and just buy the meal. And just like one lady just emailed me, she bought this meal. She was riding the mule in a corn patch and the mule bucked her off. And she says, do you know what happened? Uh, it can be a lot of things, but always get this in your mind, folks. All mules, all mules are equine. They have the flight and fright response. They all buck, kick, bite. Uh, just like a bumper on the front of a car is when you make a mistake and a bumper on the back when somebody else makes a mistake. It's not a matter of how. It's a matter of when. It's going to happen. So get an education, please. Uh, sure, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. Uh, we've got a lot of things on YouTube as well. Uh, find what works for you. The uh, hands-on is awesome. Uh, Eric Palmer there on the west side of uh, Phoenix would be a good guy to go to uh, to be able to get some education and set, a, set a, a mule or two would be a good deal. But you have to also remember there's a phenomenal... Uh, thing we have to consider and that is you got a good chance of getting hurt uh, even with a trained mule so uh, I, I applaud people who want to get in there but don't think it ain't going to happen it's it's a possibility so you got the the flight the fright they're all equine are there any things are there any other things that once they kind of get that basic principle and kind of establish okay I I, I get that is there anything that they need to know about communicating differently with a mule and donkey versus communicating with a horse? Can I just do everything that I did with a horse and just convert that over to a mule and donkey? When it comes down to our basic communication, our, uh, our voice, our hands, our legs, and our seat, yes. Same thing, identical to horse. You're going to use your legs when it comes time, your hands when it comes time, your seat when it comes time. And the best thing to do with your voice is don't say nothing. But, you know, as far as when it comes down to the mules, the biggest thing you have to remember is you, when you're building a foundation or fixing a problem, you always use the nose. And, of course, you saw that this weekend, Dave, this Saturday, when I was doing Why Does My Mule Do That clinic. Uh, when the one mule would pull his foot out from underneath me as I was trying to hold it out, and he wouldn't allow it, and then I put the come along hitch on it, and the the problem was over. He just picked up his foot, and that was it. So communicating from the nose is very very important. But there's not a lot of difference in riding one when it comes down to full communication. There is a major difference when you ride one in the mountains, though, and. and that's when the mule is so much smoother and so much more natural intelligence, but we still have to ride. Yeah. And just add there, add there for me because Beth was really concerned about training mules and donkeys. She wants to get it right. What would you say to, uh, to a horse trainer who wants to step into that world of training mules and donkeys and, and kind of expose themselves to what that looks like? What would be your best next step? Well, the best, best next step is to consider when you're riding a mule, 
you're riding a horse, a donkey, and a mule. So you have three entities. It's important that you understand the donkey side because a lot of people say, all right, when that mule is stubborn, all that mule is doing is really asking, what, what should I be doing here? Are you sure you want me to do it? I think I've got a better idea. Those are all from the donkey side. And people think it's stubborn because the mule won't do what they want them to do. Well, the majority of the time, you're miscommunicating. And so it's, it's not a matter of, uh, of just using your, your legs all the time. You need to use your hands, your seat, and your feet to communicate. So with a donkey, uh, you're going to be using the nose. With a mule, you're going to be using the nose. Those are two main factors when you're building a foundation you use the nose to be able to communicate. So that's one thing. The other thing is you're not going to use a smooth snaffle bit. If you use a smooth snaffle bit, you're going to end up with that donkey pulling on you. You're going to end up with that mule running through his shoulder because they don't respect that smooth snaffle bit. And as the people saw in my Why Does My Mule Do That clinic, there's a major difference in the communication and how much more refined my mule rider's martingale was. And then the the... The one thing to consider too is, is the horsemen use halters that come way high up on the face by the cheeks. Uh, since mules communicate better with their nose, we readjust the halter where the knots are in the nose and the, the halter is close contact so that you got immediate communication. So with, with the factors of the bit, factors of the halter, and then lastly we have to consider the, the, the breaching in the saddles. One of my clients uh, was lucky enough. It's really hard to find. I'm glad she did. Uh, she found one of my saddles. And she emailed me. She says, hey, my mule's shaking his head. And I've got your saddle and your pad. Well, she had my saddle and my pad, but she had another breaching and another breast collar. Well, the breaching was incorrectly adjusted. The cinches were too far apart. And the breast collar... Uh, was a pulling collar. So she had several things that were incorrect that were making my saddle not work correctly. And on top of that, uh, whoever she bought the saddle from went from the nylon latigos to leather latigos. And folks, we don't use leather in our seat belts, do we? No, we don't because nylon is so much more stronger. Nylon doesn't pull like leather does. And you got to remember that leather, every bend that you have with leather, you got cracking where nylon doesn't. And the other thing is, lastly, they were using billets on the right side. When you use a billet, you can't evenly cinch that saddle up. And so my saddles, if you use them correctly, as it says in the video, and unfortunately she didn't get the video, but if they're, if they're, if they're put together correctly with the, a proper breaching, aligned it, and the proper breast collar and aligned it, and cinches close together, and nylon ladder goes, the saddle will work fine, as you have, you, you know, a lot of my clients will tell you. You know, it's, it's when people try to make my saddle a horse saddle, it's when they run into a problem. Yeah, that question was Susan Maybeer, Maybeer Lassier. She says, my mule shakes his head when going downhill. I have your satter, saddle and I have it set behind the shoulder and what else can I do? And, and you're saying that th it was other pieces of tack and a couple other items. That's right. I've spoke to her and she said, I said, ma'am, right now your saddle is sitting on top of the scapula. And she said, yes. Uh, you know, it, it, I mean, she says, no, I put it back. And I said, well, in a picture, I'm seeing it on top. And, and there again, it, it didn't take much of a ride. So mm -hmm. it only takes 15, less than 15 minutes. And that saddles on that scapula because mules carry their weight down low. Horses carry their weight up high. Mules are hourglass belly in their, in their shoulders. Uh, hourglass belly in their shoulders are V-shaped. So that saddle is going to go forward. Yeah. Well, thanks for sending that question in, Susan. We really appreciate it. Glad we were able to get to you. And fo uh, folks, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section and we'll sure do our best to get to them. If you're watching and you're enjoying, share this out onto your Facebook page. That's how we're able to keep doing Facebook videos is getting as many people to participate. And as long as people are participating and enjoy this and, and joining us live, we'll be able to keep doing it. As long as people are loving it, we'll keep doing it. And our uh, next question, um, Joanna Minton just signed on and she says, uh, she says, hi, Steve. 
Um, my daughter is 11 years old and her question is about English saddles. Do you ride your mule English? And what do you think about mules in English saddles? So first, Steve, es explain to us what she's asking and then if you could answer her question. Okay, basically an English saddle is a small saddle. It's very light uh, the, and it's used for doing dressage and jumping in English type riding. Uh, when it comes to dressage, there's no finer riding than, than their size. It's, it's poetry in motion. The downside of English saddles is this. It's only one cinch, and it's only a front cinch. I tried to make a saddle that for a mule that was an English-type saddle. Uh, the downside is a teeny, tiny, tiny market. And so it cost a lot of money for these saddles to design them. So that English saddle will be up on top of the scapula in a short time because it's only a front cinch. And that English saddle is not set up for a breaching. And the folks that, if you look at the pictures of people in English saddles setting on mules, where's that saddle setting? On top of the scapula. Fine for a horse, not for a mule. Uh, when it comes to a saddle, when it comes to the mule, and I was just explaining this to a client today. Uh, I said, take my saddle. Again, we saw, we saw this in the, in the why does my mule do that clinic this weekend. Take, take the back of my saddle and push down on it. You'll see the front of the saddle lift up. That is on purpose because it sits on that fat pocket. Well, that English saddle, uh, when it sits on that fat pocket, it cradles and goes forward and goes right on top of the scapula. So, Right now, I cannot tell you of any saddle that'll work. The closest I've seen is Crosby, but there again, uh, you know, several of my students and, and apprentices have wanted to write English, but you just can't do it without causing a lot of stress upon the animal. So there you go, Joanna. If you have any follow-ups, feel free to, uh, feel free to put them in the comments. And, uh, and if we don't get to them now, uh, I'll work hard to make sure Steve and I get to them uh, when we're done. So if you're just joining us, I saw Eric Palmer, Palmer hopped on, Steve, and uh, yeah. I know he's excited here. Eric, uh, if you if you didn't see, Steve gave you a shout out a little bit earlier, sending uh, sending someone your way for some uh, some donkey training. Um, let's take a look here at the next question that I got. Um, so uh, we had a question come in about full nutrition, and I know that you sent back and you. Um, as well, let's see, where is it here? Ah, oh, man, I'll have to look for it. I have the question right here, but I don't have the context. Let's go to this one. Um, let's talk about uh, side bone, ring bone, and powdered butte. So, uh, so somebody asks, and I don't have the name, feeding an 18-year-old draft mule in good weight. He has side bone and ring bone that is treated with powdered butte. Right now, he is given two cups of dry cob to mix with his butte. Would it be safe to feed him a ration balancer instead of cob? Yeah, cob is, they just can't digest it very well. That's the donkey side, uh, and, and you'll end up causing more problems. When it comes down to side bone, ring bone, it's a horrible way to die. Um, and, and anyway, I won't go into any more stress than that. Uh, I prefer to use, um, um, oh, I lost the name for it here. Um, That happens to me too. Oh man, I hate that. It just uh, I say it all the time, and and, and what it amounts to is uh, it, it does really good for cleaning out the intestines of the sand and this sort of thing, and uh, and you can add your butte in, you know. Uh, but I prefer to use a whole butte tablet. I reach in, get the tongue, shove it in the back of the mouth, and go from there. Um, but um, uh, uh, and that's that's only like that's only like it's like a band aid covering over the major problem. That side bone or ring bone, you cannot believe the amount of pain that that mule is going through. And yes, um, this butte is going to help take away some of it, but they don't show pain like we do, uh, any way, shape, or form. And they'll brace right into it, just like the call we had with one that, that had colic. They had no idea it was colic until it fell over dead, you know. Uh, beet pulp is what I'm looking for. Beet pulp. 
I like to, if I'm going to hide a medicine, I'm going to hide it in beet pulp. And nice thing about feeding about a cup of beet pulp wet each day is that you can put your butte in it and go from there. You might want to look at a paste butte. Uh, I think it's quicker, more quicker reacting, and uh, it's really easy to put it in the corner of the mouth and go from there. Uh, but side bone and ring bone is a major problem with mules, uh, especially draft mules because they've been used a lot plowing and been um, uh, pulling heavy weights. And a, a lot of folks that use them, unfortunately, they uh, they they put uh, uh, over checks on them, which elevates their head. It makes them use their front end a lot and they end up doing a lot of pounding. And they end up blowing the front end out. Uh, Grand Canyon mules are really bad about ring bone and sign bone from going down the hill so much. But there you go. Yeah. So, uh, again, if you have any more follow-up questions about that one, uh, go ahead and put it in the uh, in the um, comment section. So, had a real quick question come in here uh, live from, uh, from Eileen Easterday. She says, um, Hello, Steve. Once a saddle is ordered from you, how long does it usually take until it's ready? That includes ordering the collar, britchin, pad, and bit with bridle. Thank you for this live stream. Thanks so much for Eileen. Really appreciate you being here. And Steve, how long does it take for that stuff to get shipped out? Hi, Eileen. I visited with her in the past. She's got a unique uh, last name, Easter Day. There you are, you know. Anyway, uh, I've got them in stock. Uh, I, 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 you call today, I ship them out tomorrow. Unless you want something special, otherwise I pretty much have everything in stock ready to go. Very cool. So hopefully that helps you there, Eileen. Um, uh, next question. So the next question was, Steve, what's your preference of a Molly or a John? And that's it. <laughs> I, I don't. I prefer disposition. Disposition, disposition, disposition. I've trained hundreds of mules, and like Dr. Miller said the other day, it's probably thousands by now, but it makes no difference. Uh, I have people all the time, so I'd much rather have a Molly uh, because uh, they're not as dumb as a John. And I'd much rather have a John because they don't come in season like Molly's do. And, and they're smarter. And, you know, I hear all of these. But I guarantee you, I've had sorry John mules. I've had awesome John mules. I've had awesome Molly mules. And I've had some sorry uh, Molly Mule. So it's, it's disposition, disposition, disposition. You get a willing disposition, like the, like the two meals we had this weekend. Mm -hmm. Ah, they were awesome. The only thing they needed to do was just know what you wanted. That was it. You know, the mom with a 14 year old girl, she was concerned about her daughter. Shoot, that daughter could ride the hell because that meal had disposition worth his weight in gold. So, uh, I don't, it makes no difference to me. Their color, their, their gender makes no difference. It's just disposition and ride them. Very good. You'll hear Steve talk a lot about disposition being everything. Oh, yeah. What do folks get caught up with, uh, you know, in, in, instead of disposition? What do they get all, what do they get all sideways about thinking that it's gotta be this or it's gotta be that? I know last week we talked, or the week before we talked about, no, 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 we did a YouTube, 12 year old mule, the number's 12 years old, right? This, uh, this last one, someone said, uh, you know, he's about 12 years old and you were looking and the mule wound up being quite a bit older just judging yeah. by the teeth and some of the other signs that you had. 12 years old is kind of th the age and they've been driven or packed or whatnot, they get sideways about that. What are some of the other mispriorities that people have um, along with, you know, the the Molly or the John? Uh, you, you know, they think they want to have one with a lot of experience. And, you know, what kind of experience do you really want? That's the downside. And, and unfortunately, right now, we got a lot of people saving these animals from the kill pens. And these people are ending up in the hospital. And they're there in a the kill pen for a reason. Now, can once in a while you get lucky? Yeah. I've talked to some clients that's got lucky. But I just rescued this mule. I can't tell you how many times a week I hear this. And I can't tell you how many times a week they all have the same identical problems. you got to remember that 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 these mules are there for a reason. Either somebody couldn't get along with them, yeah, 
or they ended up hurting somebody. Yeah, but you, you never hear those stories. And the problem is a lot of these dealers will buy these mules and uh, either maybe hear a story or make up one and boom, you're in the hospital. Folks, there's no such thing as, as a mule that won't hurt you. It's important you build a foundation. And it's important you also have to remember that that foundation is six months. I just had a lady, I think she's uh, probably listening to this communication right now, Lynn. And she's got a donkey that's been dragging her around. And, and she says, I've used the come along hitch, but it doesn't always work. The key is... You always use it. And the key is do small things. The, the donkey won't load in the trailer. Well, let's go back and let's build a foundation. My video, uh, Problem Meal, Building a New Foundation, talks about how to do that. So many folks just go ahead and, and put my come along rope on and say, okay, Steve says abracadabra. <laughs> uh, well, you know, there's a little bit more than just put it on. Then it's how you use your wrist. Like I show people in the videos, I mean in the in the clinics all the time. This is pulling. This is communicating. Bump, bump, bump. Not pull, 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 pull. And as soon as you pull against that donkey, you are going to get yourself dragged. So, uh, you know, when it comes down to these mules, they're awesome. We're hearing better and better that people are breeding them better. The horse market has tanked. And so now people are saying, oh, the mules now is big money. And so now all of a sudden we got people with mule saddles and mule bridles. And I hear all these things that was customized for this mule. And uh, and I, I love the mule mania. I'm looking forward to going to Bishop. I'm looking forward to uh, the Hoosier Clinic I'm going to have. The one in Minnesota is going to be awesome as well. But folks got to get it in their mind that you got to get disposition and when it comes down to these rescues, you may be calling 911 for yourself. Yeah, very good. So Eric uh, hopped in and he said, hey, Steve and Dave, I think the guy earlier was wanting to go for a ride in the White Tank Mountains. If he hooks, ah. if he looks me up, I'll take him. Uh, had shock there earlier this week, thinking of Steve and his family in the last week. Glad to see him here today. Oh, yeah. Uh, Steve, do you want to share real quick what happened this last week? I know you had said maybe... Maybe mention it real quick. Yeah, it's kind of tough, Dave. Uh, my mother went home to be with the Lord uh, last Thursday. Uh, she had an awesome day uh, with my wife. They went and got their hair done. They had lunch. They enjoyed each other's company and stuff. My mom is eight, was 88 years old, and uh, I brought my, my Border Collie puppy. I got an eight-month-old Border Collie that is the light of our lives right now. He's incredible. <laughs> Uh, he can't do no wrong, even though he chewed my boat, uh, plug off the other day. And anyway, got a yacht, you know, constantly chewing. But anyway, my mom passed away, but that dog, her, she spent a half an hour, 45 minutes petting and rubbing and grandma's puppy and all this stuff. That was 830 at night, 1030 at night. They called me and she had gone home to be with the Lord, you know? Yeah. So. I'm, you know, I got a big hole in my life now, but we're we're going to keep on going because I know my mom loved life and uh, she wanted me to enjoy life to the fullest, so we're doing it. Yeah, well, I appreciate you sharing that. I know that uh, I I was in prayer for you that day, been in prayer for you, and uh, it was great to be able to uh, to come out and see you on Saturday and spend some time with you. So um, let's keep moving right along here, and folks, if you're watching. Um, even if you don't have a question, just pop in the comment section. Say hi to Steve. Uh, let him know where you're watching from today. That's always really fun. Um, yeah. Over on uh, over on Instagram, we've got people all over the world that are uh, leaving comments, that are you know liking photos and following, and then we get to see their photos and like them. So if you're watching today, just go ahead and pop in there. Say hey, I'm watching from and wherever you're at. So I'm coming to you live from. Uh, Chandler, Arizona. It's a beautiful day out here. Of course, Steve is out on the ranch in Queen Valley, and it's it's just gorgeous out here in Arizona at this time. Boy, wasn't it beautiful weather on Saturday? It was just awesome. Oh, couldn't have been more perfect. Uh, it was it was good. The people I had people come from Michigan, from California, from New Mexico. It was it was awesome. Uh, from the west side of Phoenix, um, it was it was awesome to to have these people and. They they learned uh, to to communicate and they you know it's it's hands on 
you know, right there. The people can see it. Um, they don't have to just hear me say, you know, th this saddle works. They've seen it. They don't have to just see the bits or the come along hitch and, and how to communicate with them. It was, it was awesome weather. And um, that's Arizona for you, you know. Yeah. Yeah, sure is. Uh, Terry Brown is watching from Oklahoma. So, hi, Terry. We're glad that you're here. Okay. Glad that you're watching. Um, our next question comes from uh, Jared Wilson. Jared asks, um, Steve, how do you feel about canvassing? I think that's how you say it. I use them. Don't ride with halter. Caverson. I'd like to know your opinion. You want to tell me oh. what you think there? Okay, it's a caverson. 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 There we go. Yeah, and what it amounts to, it goes around the nose, just above the corners of the mouth, uh, about an inch, inch and a half, depends on what you want to get done. Uh, I do not like a caverson. I like to have my meals pack a bit. The problem with a caverson is they tend to make their mouth shut so that the mule isn't able to pick up the bit and pack it and be soft. Now, I do use kind of a caverson uh, that I use on pack mules along with other muzzles and is made out of... Uh, uh, baling uh, wire and a uh, and uh, baling twine that I put on there to keep them from opening their mouth. But that's the thing with a cavison. Uh, they are uh, they're made to keep the mouth shut. I prefer to put the bit in the mule's mouth, let the mule pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, and finally pack it where he likes it. I don't like the idea of one wrinkle or two wrinkles. I like the idea of a comfortable mule, a happy mule that. And, and the thing about a mule is they don't care about their mouth. So therefore, you have to make that mouth happy. And you're not going to make it happy by shutting the mouth and making him hold a bit. Uh, so that's my thoughts, uh, partner. Great question. Uh, a lot of your English people use uh, cavissons. Um, uh, but you'll find a, a, a lot of people use a cavisson because when, when people are using incorrect bits and most of the time horse techniques, the mule ends up gapping his mouth. Well, then they're going to shut it. Well, the problem is the mule is trying to say, hey, will you listen to me? This bit is causing me a lot of pain. Or your hands are not correct. Or the bit's too high. Or like most of these bits that are out there, they come from Pakistan uh, or some other country that are takeoffs of bits. And they say, Steve, it looks just like yours. No, when you actually put gauges on it, you'll see how much more different mine is. And number one, it's American made. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you'll, we'll all get a kick out of this. Uh, Daniel Stevens says, I'm trying to listen while I prune a mesquite tree for a client. Always good to hear what you have to say, Steve. How about that? <laughs> Trimming a mesquite tree. Good for him. That's uh, trying to listen too. That's pretty awesome. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Did I tell you, Dave, I had a client call me up and he ordered saddles and britches and breast collars. And all this stuff. And I said, well, thank you so much. I appreciate you doing that. By the way, what do you do for a living? He says, I'm a surgeon. I watch your videos between surgeries to get myself relaxed. Yeah. Isn't that something? <laughs> that is something. Yeah, you did tell me that. And I got a kick out of it then, too. It's just awesome. You never know, right? You just never yeah. know who's going to be watching and what they're going to be doing. We've got uh, David Pen uh, Pengali uh, saying, hey, Steve, love this thing. Uh, Sonoa, Georgia. Watch him from Sen Sonoa, Georgia. Joe, hey, Dave has the most awesome coffee. Oh, he makes coffee. He, 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 uh, uh, what's he do? Anyway, he, he makes it, he gets the coffee beans and then he does whatever he does to them. He's got one called Zombie and that coffee is awesome. Oh, awesome. Uh, he's an entertainer. Uh, he travels all over the world. They actually fly him to different countries. He gets on these, these ships that goes on cruises and he entertains them. And best of all, he's a brother in the Lord. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you here, Dave. Um, let's see here. We've got another question from Cole Hoffman over on Instagram. Uh, Cole says, uh, I have this mule that is around six. I got him when he was around two. And I read Mule Skinner Bible by Max Harsha and followed all the steps. I can ride and pack him, but he's often jumpy when I ride him and will go to bucking for no reason that I can see. He just seems kind of sour and untrusting. I've never hit him and I don't know the guy before me, don't know how the guy before me treated him, but I was curious if you could help me in any way or had any suggestions. Oh, Max, Max, 
I've I've known Max a lot of years. I mean, that man, he's trained a bunch of mules. But yeah, and I've told Max this as well. I mean, he's just way too harsh uh, with stuff and and rushes things through. I don't like taking barbed wire and uh, slapping one on the butt to get him to jump over a fence. Not my thing. Uh, I would say let's go back and look at foundation uh, and, and and see what's going on there. If he's bucking, then he says, hey, my back is sore. My shoulder is uh, sore. Uh, are you using a crouper? Are you using a breaching? Um, are you tightening that back cinch and keeping the front one loose? And lastly, what kind of saddle are you riding in? Yeah, so hopefully that gives you enough coal to go off of. Um, I know we've got a lot of resources where we talk a lot about what G Steve just mentioned. And if you guys aren't subscribed to the YouTube channel, you should be. I had uh, I had one of the gentlemen from the uh, from the um, uh, the clinic on Saturday say, "Hey, I, you know, I know Steve's got videos up there." But I have a hard time watching them because I just have to wait for the next Steve Edwards video to pop up. And I told him, I said, look, if you go to YouTube.com and uh, slash, I think it's Mule Ranch or Mule Ranch AZ, and you click on Steve's videos, just do a search for Queen Valley Mule Ranch. Click on the channel. You can see all of Steve's videos. And there are a lot of videos up there. Really, really good stuff. And, of course, if you ever want to go in more depth, of course, there's you know videos on the store where you can get the whole video. But a lot of times what you need are these small little pieces of, of mule and donkey truth. And you can get those from these YouTube uh, channels. So Cole, go ahead and check out the YouTube channel and you can get more there. And if you have any more follow-up questions, be sure to use the comment section. Um, it, Eileen, it, it, yeah, go ahead. Let's, uh, let's stick with Cole. You know, I mean, okay. make sure he understands to get back with us because, you know, there's, there's a lot of things here. A mule don't buck unless he is in pain. All right. It's, it's just something that a mule just don't want to waste his time doing this. He's telling you, I've got a problem here. So I would, number one, I'd get to a chiropractor. That's number one. Number two, I would make sure the teeth got floated because those two things right there could cause the mule to buck. And then we got to go back to the, to the chiropractor. What is causing the problem? Is it shoeing? Is it a tail crouper? Uh, is it saddle? But, but let's tell him to let's stick with him. If he, if he needs my help, I'm willing to help him out. Awesome. Very cool. I'll make sure to follow up with him. Um, Eileen asked the question, and then we also had one about this same topic. Um, the one from Neil on Instagram says, uh, my daughter's mule moonshine, we're having trouble with his feet. He hates having them trimmed. Any suggestions? And then Eileen follows that up by saying, could we visit about a little bit about hoof conditions? Is it normal to have little cracks on the pad? So if you want to go ahead and start with Neil, uh, trouble with his feet. He hates having them trimmed. You want to talk about that for a moment? Yeah, it's number one. It's how we pick up the feet. That's really uh, a really important thing. Uh, most people want to pull on the foot to pick it up, and then the mule uh, doesn't have his balance and goes from there. Teaching cues, you know, touching the the scapula, rubbing on it so that the mule picks up his foot. Uh, Dave, I think we've got some stuff on YouTube, don't we? About, mm -hmm. about feet, okay? Yeah. Picking them up. Uh, my one video on shoeing has got some helpful hints. The back foot's the biggest one. The back foot, let's just say we're on the left rear foot, which looking from behind the mule, the left rear, okay? So you put your left hand on the hip, the mule moves over. You slide your right hand down the leg, and then you bring the foot back toward the shoulder, and then you go straight back nice and slow. He may pull a little bit, and then go straight back and over to the left. The biggest problem is people try to pick up the foot like a horse. And when it comes down to these mules, they have the donkey bone structure. And when you try to pick it up like a horse and just go straight out or out, you know, and, and back, then you end up dis not, not having the hip bone disengage and the mule is trying to say, all he's trying to say to you is, hey, this hurts and pulls it away, you know. So teach the mule, most of all, how to give your foot and be nice and relaxed. If you go to the Phoenix Zoo, we got big draft horses and stuff there where we trained all the horses and the horse actually picks his foot out and we slide the stand on and he puts his foot down on the stand. We had a video of that sometime, Dave, you know, 
Um, maybe take the boys with us while we're doing it, of course. You know? Oh, yeah. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. I was out at the Phoenix yeah. Zoo uh, in the early days. You would put in a program, and then you had gone back out there to work with some of their staff there. And uh, it's a really neat thing that they've got multi-million dollar uh, program, multi-million dollar facilities that they mm-hmm. have. It's really quite something. The Phoenix Zoo has done an amazing job with all of their facilities, especially the equine facility. Yeah. That's really quite something. Yeah, so I said all that to say this. You see, these are draft horses that have like number 10 shoes, and they literally put their foot in there and hold it. It's mainly because of the training process I put together. Is it normal to see light cracks in the soles? Yes. Remember that the foot is always continually growing, and since it's always continually growing, that hoof wall will grow. That sole will grow. Uh, uh, you're going to have the cracks because of the expansion and contraction of the foot. You get into a lot of mud one day and then it's dry another day, expansion and contraction. The very best thing you can do with your mule is to keep them trimmed short, especially during the wintertime. You got a lot of mud and snow. That stuff balls up in there. You got a, a lot of, a lot of, uh, problems you can start developing. Uh, that you need to uh, that you need to address. So keep your foot short during the winter. Keep it trimmed down. It's not so much important to shoe them as it is trim them and keep them as short as possible. The more the hoof, the more the stuff's going to get in there. And there's lots of hoof diseases you could end up with with uh, with too much mud and too much manure in that foot. So just a follow-up, as, as you folks are listening, if you want to send in pictures, if you want to send in images, Steve's always taking a look at what it is. Sometimes I'll know the answer here or there. I know how to point you to a video. But Steve's always taking a look at photos. Um, and, of course, if you're going to be in the area where he's going to be at a clinic and, and you know he's talking a little bit about disengaging the hind corners and how to pick up the foot, you ought to make sure to check out the muleranch.com slash events, see where he'll be. And if you're one of those folks that wants to host a clinic, um, you know, we've got someone in Maine saying, hey, we don't have anybody out here. So we're saying, do you want to host a clinic? Are there enough people out there who would want to get together and do a clinic? So there's all sorts of ways uh, for you to get, you know, further education on these things. But good for you guys for um, asking questions, making sure to go about it the right way. We had um, the Urban Goat from Instagram. I tried to get his name, but I couldn't find his name. So it's just the Urban Goat. Uh, and he says, I want to get a donkey uh, to pack with. Do you think it would be difficult for me to train a gentle BLM burrow? I have some horse experience, but zero donkey experience. So I'm not familiar with what a, I know what a burrow is, but I don't know what a BLM burrow is. Can you uh, answer that question for us, Steve? You bet. BLM, Bureau of Land Management. What they do is they go out and they collect wild donkeys and they bring them in and they put them in a pen and then, you know, people adopt them and go from there. Matter of fact, right down the road here, 25 miles is uh, Florence Prison and they've got over 400 donkeys there and uh, they've got almost 800 horses. And I'm teaching them how to communicate with the donkey to get him to go. Here's the thing. you got to remember, this is a wild animal. <laughs> a wild animal. You're, it's going to take quite a bit of knowledge to be able to get in there and get it done. Is it easier on a donkey? Absolutely. But you got to remember, they still have teeth. They still bite. They still kick. Okay? And that's all part of their way to think how they can keep their preserve their life, you know. So in the very beginning, uh, you, you need to get just like my my article I've got, Welcome Home, Mr. Mule. Anything I say about a mule is going to focus on the donkey, okay? The donkey is the core of this thing. So if I say mule, think donkey. If I say donkey, think mule because they're, they're pretty much one and the same. Once in a while, the horse side of the mule gets in the way, <laughs> but um, that's where it goes to bucking and problems, but... Yes, uh, you know, they're awesome. What state are you in? What state is he in? Uh, you know what? He doesn't say what state he's in. That's one that came in from Instagram, but I'll follow up okay. with him and I'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, you're going to finish? Well, I'm just going to say, you know, it's, uh, you know, seeing these pictures and seeing it on Facebook and stuff, do, do people get to see what I comment and this sort of thing when I see the pictures? I say, do this and do that. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. So they're able to see what I'm telling them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the tack thing, Dave, 
I never thought I'd be traveling all over the world doing this stuff. But if anybody has problems at all, the biggest problems that they have with is tack. You know, uh, I never thought I'd be taking my designs of stuff and, and helping people out. People think, oh, I'm going to go buy this breaching and it's going to work. All breachings are not designed the same, you know, and so I, I've got people all over the world that send me videos and say, or pictures and say, you know, this isn't working. What can I do? And, and I simply tell them about a few adjustments and go from there. But we got a lot of videos on YouTube, you know, hands on. Yeah, we got a lot and we're about to get a lot more. We have a, a couple more questions here and then we'll call it a day. I have, uh, I have one from Lynn and Steve. You don't have to go into great detail on this because we have some in other areas and I'll make sure she gets some additional resources. But it seems like the trailer keeps coming up. Trailer is a big concern for folks. Um, she says, I have a mammoth donkey and I'll admit that, uh, he's spoiled or she's spoiled. She has a fo phobia of going to the trailer. Once there, she'll go. However, getting her there can be a real trial. She'll pull out of my hands and run away. Doesn't matter who who is leading, she wants to run away. At a trail ride, I can ride her right to the trailer and tie her up, but have to make sure that we have a lariat so uh, on her so she can take off when it's time to get in. When I'm leading her at home and she wants to go back to others to grace, she will often pull out of my hands and go. Frequently, I'll wrap the road around a post or gate and haul her back, give her a couple jerks and she'll come. But other times, if I don't let go, I'll fall over. Kind of, I'm kind of wobbly. Uh, P.S. I have the come along in the barn, but it doesn't always work. Thanks. What would you say to Lynn? Practice, practice, practice. Start small. I uh, like the video, uh, the uh, problem meal build a new foundation. And, and, and we got to also remember this that halter pulling is one of the major things of mules and donkeys. They stiffen all five made neck, all step, stiffen all five major neck muscles and they're gone. Uh, we have to consider that. So, uh, when they, when she uses the come along, she has to use the come along by itself without the rope halter. Go from A to B every single day. And here's the thing. Build a foundation. It's not done just in a few hours. It's done over a six month time frame, four to six hours a day of training. I mean, a week of training. And remember, everywhere you go, especially if you've got a new place, new, new campground or new something like that, put that come along hitch and lead because otherwise they decide they're going to go. They're going to do it, especially when we've already used in, in properly adjusted rope halters or nylon halters, that's what's created the problem. And then we start doing horse stuff of disengaging hindquarters and doing lateral flexions. All we do is make them stronger and more independent. Awesome. Next question comes from uh, Sharon Graham. She says, uh, my new mule does not like to be alone. He will leave my other mule if I go out the gate, but when he first got here, he would mow you down if you took his buddy away. His behavior was horrendous in the hauler's trailer alone. When he arrived, he would not lead at all on my property. He stood like a post. I found some mule articles that worked fine. He's doing much better, and I can now lead him with the rope dangling over my shoulder out back 2.5 acres and out of my gain, no problem. I have saddled him and ridden him once since he arrived. I do something with him every other day, tie him to a tree, I'm very rural here. The previous dealer rode him with a uh, Dutton bit. What's my next step? I really like this mule. He is a very loving individual. Once you get past his fears, he's very respectful. Sharon. Yeah, and, and fears are, folks, it, that again goes back to disposition. It's Everybody thinks, oh, he's been beat on or he's been hurt. But a lot of them are just flat fearful. It's that side, the horse side, that seems to be, to me, more fearful because I've rarely seen it in in the donkey uh but uh, what's what's the next step is to do more than just tie him uh i suggest taking a sur single putting a sur single on him putting a rope halter on him put him out in a round pin let him go do not put him in a two and a half acres do not put him in an acre do put him in a 20 by 20 stall if they're out there they don't need you so you need to be doing that. And if you, and you have to properly adjust the rope halter, uh, the rope halter is going to be a super important tool. So surf singling with the rope halter. And then when they start framing themselves up and balance themselves out, surf single 
with the with the mule riders martin who is just going to start getting them to think about their communication with the halter it's going to think about their communication when it comes down to the bit and the same thing with lynn with her donkey she needs to put the sur single on put the rope halter on turn them loose in a round pin and let them get soft the big problem is is these kind of animals that have learned to get around you and and especially if a trader has just got it and bought it from someplace and went from there uh, you you need to start over and build a new foundation, you know, uh, and that surf single does it. Now, surf single is a wonderful tool. Even if you've got a trained animal, what it does is it keeps them tuned up. Uh, and that, we've got some stuff on YouTube about that. And, of course, the surf singles are on my store. Yeah, that's great. Um, let's see here. We've got uh, Dan St Daniel Stevens says, Steve, is there an easy fix for a mule that's buddy sour or barn sour? You know my mule, Chava. Every time I leave my house to go for a ride, he's fighting me uh, to get back home. I know we talked about that last week or the week before, so I'll link to that. But do you have a real quick word or two that you would say about the buddy sour or barn sour? Okay, buddy sour, barn, barn sour, those are two different things. Uh, let's go with the barn sour route first. He wants to hurry up and get back home. Why? We pull the saddle off. We pull the bridle off. We put him in the corral. We feed him. Ah, I'm on my big chair for the day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when, when he comes home, if he gives you a hard time and he wants to hurry up and get to the, uh, uh, to the hitching post, good. Let him. When he gets to the hitching post, instead of loosening the cinches, make him tighter. Instead of taking the saddle off, leave it on. Pull up tighter. Pull the cinches up tighter. Pull the bridle off so he doesn't switch around. Okay? And then what you're going to do, he's going to think, wait a minute. This thing's gotten tighter instead of looser. Now, you see, instead of a comfortable place being the hitching post, now it's going to be uncomfortable. So, as soon as he gets quiet, he drops his head. Take the mule. Walk away from the hitching post. Maybe 20 yards or so. Loosen up the cinches away from the hitching post. Say, hey, this is a good place to be, and then walk him back over to the hitching post, tighten him up again. See, what we've taught him is the hitching post is where I get the saddle off of me, and I get my feed, boom, boom, boom. Let them stand there. Even if you got to let them stand there overnight, that's okay. It's a long ways from the heart. Most mules I've seen are overfed anyway, so he can do without a meal. Just make sure he's watered up, you know, but don't take it off. Now, buddy sour, no such thing as a way to fix it. I had a guy tell me that he went to a clinic and they said, take the mule in a circle. No, 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 no. You know, if that ain't going to fix it, how can you fix it when you're on the side of the Grand Canyon and you can go around in a circle to get them to keep from winning? No, no, no. What you do is just simply make it hard on them. Anytime they do something that's not what you want, you tell the right brain, don't do it. Left brain, what? don't do it. What do you do? You take your hands, ice cream cone position. My mule rider's martingale is the preferred thing. And what you're going to do is you're going to go right brain, listen to me. Left brain, listen to me. Increase the intensity. Right, left, right, left. And you're going to, to tell them that is not acceptable. It's not going to happen. Okay. And the problem is this. If you're not using the mule rider's martingale, they'll stick their nose up, out, and elevate their head. When they do that, they got you. You know. So that's why I developed that martingale. But... When it comes to Buddy Sour, that is a normal thing that happens with all equine. The problem is mules will, will tend to be more susceptible to it. They're more subservient to the horses. So they will, they'll really buddy up to a horse. Horse will beat them up. Horse will eat all their feed, but they'll be subservient to it. Or maybe they'll pick out a buddy, you know, and, and think they can't go anywhere without them. A lot of people will buy a goat or a Shetland pony or something like that. Now they can't go anywhere unless they take the goat of the Shetland pony. So, you know, the best thing for you to do is be the herd leader. Right brain, listen to me. Left brain, listen to me. Right, left, right, left. And and that's like that little 14-year-old girl did. We fixed the problem. You know, the mule was running through his shoulders. Didn't do it no more. Yeah, she really did a great job. Okay, last question we got from uh, from Lynn. And uh, I suspect the answer might be a little bit similar to another, but I'll, I'll let you be the be the expert, right? So uh, my mule loads at home with no problem. 
I take him away and he puts the brakes on when time to return. Any suggestions? He puts the brakes on when it's time to return to the trailer? I would suspect that's it. Okay, it sounds like it. Yeah, well, you know, there again, he's not looking forward to climbing in that trailer all hot and sweaty and this sort of thing. So this is where it's going to take my communication skills, her communication skills, his communication skills of using your legs and your hands. So what you want to do is you want to go forward where they think it's going to be uncomfortable. So you're going to take your legs right, left, right brain, left brain. Your hands are going to be directly out in front. You're going to put your hands down so it gives them a place to go. You've made right here uncomfortable, and you want to make going forward comfortable. So by using your legs, your, your calves first, asking, side of your stirrup, telling, your spur demanding. But you also don't want to use both legs at the same time. You always remember there's no cranial lobe with the right to the left, left to the right. So when you use your legs, use right, left, right, left, and, and get them to go forward. They go forward a little bit, get quiet. They're doing the correct thing. They stop again, right, left, right, left. That's what you do. But don't go into circles. You'll end up having a mule running through his shoulder and even rearing up. Very good. You heard it there, folks, straight from the source, right? Steve, thanks so much for taking some time to hang out. This is a lot of fun. I'm going to be collecting. We had a, a couple questions come in that we're not going to be able to get to today. I'll make sure that we leave a comment there, and uh, I'll start collecting questions for uh, for the next stream. You want to do this next week again? Yep, sounds good. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go for a ride. I haven't ridden in two and a half years because of my hip, Yeah. and that, that fella, Eric Palmer, He's yeah. got a million dollar meal, guarantee you. I've watched that meal going through training and stuff, and I just, I, I licked my lips looking at that meal. And I told Eric, I says, you know, I, I need to ride, and I'd like to ride that million dollar meal. And uh, so that's, that's going to have to happen. I'll have to give you a holler, Dave. You'll have to go along and watch the old fat man get on the meal for the first time in two years. I'd get a kick out of that. I still remember when we went out and, uh, and you took me out. I was riding Stacy, uh, your wife's yeah. mule, of how many years? Twenty nine years. Twenty nine years. And so I rode Stacy, um, you know, probably qu quite a few years ago. And uh, yeah. that was my first time ever on a mule. I've been a horse a couple times, and we went out riding in your backyard, which of course is uh, the foothills of the Superstition Mountains, and it was fantastic. And there was uh, there was one section where I was a little bit unsure. Uh, we were going down. It was like a creek coming up and down. I don't know if you remember it. I can remember the picture of it going down. And uh, you said, Dave, just let her go. She knows what to do. And so I just sat there and she uh, she did what you said they'll do is, is mules will kind of stop. They'll start to think about it. They'll look around and they'll kind of like start placing their feet and they'll, they'll make a plan of what they're going to do rather than horses, which usually horses just have a clear path and they just go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love my horses, but they make really good uh, mules. <laughs> That's very good. Folks, everyone, thanks for hanging out. Be sure to go to uh, muleranch.com. Check out all of the resources that are there. There's just there's dozens and dozens and dozens of free resources there. Steve talked about Welcome Home, Mr. Mule. That's a free article there that Steve references a lot. There's another one there uh, called Mules Can't Stand Prosperity that's all about feed. Uh, Steve has a free video uh, that we're giving away right now. If you go, um, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, it's a free video all about um, talking all about feed, which is just amazing uh, content really, really important that you have a good feed program and that you know what you're doing there. Um, and so they go into great detail. It's probably the best free content that you're going to find out there and probably some of the best content that exists, even paid content. So go check that out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section here. Be sure to share this with your friends. Tag anybody who you know is looking to get into mules and donkeys, and we sure will be uh, on top of those comments. Steve, thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, you bet. I'm looking forward to see all you folks in the South, in Tennessee. I'm originally from Irwin, Tennessee, so I'm looking forward to going under, over there. And I want mules and donkeys to blow that place out. Now, let, let folks know what mules and donkeys are all about. Awesome. Well, we'll see you then. Take care. All right, partner. All right, bye.